the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Welcome as we come together to celebrate all saints. You may indeed this morning be feeling that we feebly struggle while they in glory shine, but that is our encouragement. And we worship not only together, sadly, for the last time in this hall for a month, but we worship with all the saints, including those who in glory shine. And we remember that with confidence and aspiration. So as we prepare to come to meet with God in each other, in his word and in the sacraments, let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ calls us to share the heavenly banquet of his love with all the saints in earth and heaven. Knowing our unworthiness and sin, let us ask from him both mercy and forgiveness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O Almighty God, who has knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, grant us grace so to follow the blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living we may come to those unspeakable joys which you have prepared for them that unfeignedly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sit to hear the word of God. The first reading is from Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant. So your faces shall never be ashamed. The poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord, and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, 
and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones, for those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. The second reading is from Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 to 17. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, and thanksgiving and honour, and power and might, be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please sit down. Well, brothers and sisters, I suppose it's a good day to reflect on the communion of saints when we're going to have a period of lockdown when we won't be able to meet other people as often as we would like to. And so it's good to remember that as Christians, we are never truly isolated or alone. We always have God with us and we're united with the rest of Christ's body, with all the Christians around the world united in our baptism, our receiving of communion and our faith in God through the sacrifice of Jesus. And we're united, in fact, with all the Christians there have ever been, all the elect who God has chosen, including 
those special saints we remember as particular examples, like our own St. Faith. But the Gospel is about the question, how do saints live? What are these patterns of virtuous and godly living that the Collect refers to? And I suppose, how do saints live in difficult times like the ones we are living in? Jesus taught these eight ways to the crowds at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. And we call these the Beatitudes. Now, this is not, as I used to think when I was a little boy, and I slightly misheard, the bad attitudes, <laughs> the bad attitudes. Um, but these are the ways to be beati, blessed, the Latin word blessed, hence the beati beatitudes, which is where we get that word from. The first way, being poor in spirit. So Christians in a hard time start by saying, we need God. We don't pretend that we can do it all by ourselves. Through our need of God, that we become fellow citizens with the saints and we gain for ourselves the kingdom of heaven. The second way, mourning. And I think mourning means two things. It means we don't deny our sins, but it also means we don't deny our suffering and our losses. Sometimes life is an ordeal, and as Revelation says, a great ordeal. As Christians, we're able to name that and name our losses, especially those we still love, but see no longer as we will at the end of this service. The third way is meekness. Now, I think people get meekness a bit wrong. Um, the English word's a bit misleading. It doesn't actually mean being a bit feeble or being a bit passive. If you think about the people in the Bible who are said to be meek, they include Moses and Jesus. What meekness means is being powerful in the power of the Holy Spirit, not in our own strength. It means we don't chase after earthly power because we know we are children of God and heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, as St Paul says, in whom we inherit the whole earth. The fourth way, hunger and thirst for righteousness. As Christians, we know we are not righteous and we also see around us that others are not righteous and we crave for that to change. But we know it's a craving we can only meet by looking to the Lord, as the psalmist says. We know that it's when we reflect God's glory that we will be radiant and our faces will never be ashamed. The fifth way, mercy, forgiving others. And what is just as hard, forgiving ourselves, or to be more precise, accepting that God forgives us. So we're nearly there. Number six, purity of heart. So why in Revelation are those saints before the throne of God and worshipping him day and night in the temple? Well, the answer is, the passage says, because they made themselves pure, not through some tremendous heroic effort at self-transformation, though I think the Christian life does involve a bit of effort, but because they washed their robes, the robes of their hearts and made them white in the blood of the Lamb by accepting that Jesus had already made a sacrifice for their shortcomings and they are responding to the love that he has shown. The seventh way is making peace. Christ came to show people they are God's children and to reconcile them with each other and with God. So blessed are those who join in that work and reveal how they and those they reconcile are children of God. And at this time when things are difficult and there are difficult decisions each of us has to make, 
and our community and society have to make, well, that's never more needed than now, to refuse to descend into conflict and instead to make a commitment to live peaceably. And the eighth way is bearing persecution, because the thing is, when we follow the first seven ways, we are not going to get a standing ovation from everyone around us. They will say, well, why be meek and not seek worldly power? Why be gracious and merciful and not pursue vengeance? Why are you making peace and not taking a side? And in fact, if you do all those things, Christians, it'll be the worst for you. Well, Jesus says, blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you on my account and on account of the gospel and of gospel values, rejoice and be glad. It's a great calling we have in these eight ways. It is a great challenge to live that way and none of us will get it right all the time. And we can't do it in our own strength so we need to continue to pray, as the colic says, that God will grant us the grace to follow the saints in these ways of living, that we may come to the joys he's prepared for us and all who truly love him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So we stand that we may profess our faith with all the saints. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, but one being with the Father, through with him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge our baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. It as we are led in our prayers. Some of the words I'm using today come from the Church of England's prayers for all saints. United in the company of all faithful and looking for the coming of the kingdom, let us offer our prayers to God, the source of all life and holiness. Merciful Lord, strengthen all Christian people by your Holy Spirit, that we may live as a royal priesthood and a holy nation, to the praise of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Bless Tim, David and Debbie, our bishops, and all ministers in your church, that by faithful proclamation of your word, we may be built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets into a holy temple in the Lord. Our gospel tells us how we may be blessed. 
So let us pray that in our own faith journeys, we may, with the saints gone before us, reach that place which Jesus promises for us. We give thanks on this day for those saints who have influenced us and enriched our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, give to the world and its peoples the peace that comes from above, that they may find Christ's way of freedom and life. We pray for the Queen and our government, those making key decisions which affect our lives and the future of this country. During this pandemic, we pray for those with gifts of science, those who are working on a vaccine, which may bring relief to all. And we give thanks for those in the medical profession, those who work in care homes. We pray for places where such help is not available and that strong and structured nations like ours will continue to support those which are weak and lack our resources. We pray for St Faith School, for its head Richard Fountain, the staff, pupils, and all taking a much needed half-term break. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. And we pray for ourselves, for this parish of St Faith, for our families and friends, those who are near to us and those who live far away. Hold in your embrace all who witness to your love in the service of the poor and needy, all who minister to the sick and dying, and all who bring light to those in darkness, thinking of yet more killings in a French church. We pray especially for those most affected by this pandemic, those whose businesses have failed, those left without work, those who lack the resources to care for their children, those living alone, unable to mix with others, and those whose livelihood depends on the performing arts, for actors, musicians, and for our young people, many who see a world without hope. We also pray for all who find life difficult to handle in these days, and for those who work in the mental health sector and organisations such as the Samaritans. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Touch and heal all those whose lives are scarred by sin or disfigured by pain, that raised from death to life in Christ, their sorrow may be turned to eternal joy. And in this time of all souls, remember in your mercy all those gone before us who have been well-pleasing to you from eternity. Preserve in your faith, your servants on earth. Guide us to your kingdom and grant us peace at all times. We give thanks for the whole company of your saints in glory, with whom in fellowship we join our prayers and praises. By your grace, may we, like them, be made perfect in your love. And just in a quiet moment, we bring those on our hearts and minds to the mercy of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand that we may share the peace in the room and we share the peace with those who are worshipping at a distance as well. To crown all things there must be love, to bind all together and to complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule our hearts. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us offer one another a suitable sign of peace.
to be seated while we listen to the music. <laughs> Please stand. Those in the room, we share with those at home. The Lord is here. Is the Lift up your hearts. The Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. And now we give you thanks that he is the King of glory who overcomes the sting of death and opens the kingdom of heaven to all believers. He is seated at your right hand in glory, and we believe that he will come to be our judge. And some day thank you, his saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey your command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, Christ, Christ is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, Help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. 
Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Mary, the mother of God, St. Faith, and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. We sit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ. Amen.
O God, the source of all holiness and giver of all good things, may we who have shared at this table as strangers and pilgrims here on earth be welcomed with all your saints to the heavenly feast on the day of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we join together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Now we are going to remember the names of those who've been given to us, those who have died and have preceded us to that other side. Lord God of all creator, you have made us creatures of this earth, but have also promised us a share in life eternal. According to your promises, may all who have died in the peace of Christ come with your saints to the joys of your kingdom where there will be neither sorrow nor pain, but life everlasting. Amen. Amen. We remember Brother Albert Briggs, Brother Martin Dyson, Brenda Chapman, Nina Newport, Gwen Morgan, Grace Bruti, Ian Fothergill Grant, Elizabeth Wheatley, Jean Hunter, Francis Gordon Clark. Hannah Bunn, Juliet Bowen, Hank Bowen, Judy Ouvery, Martin Stamford, Frank Tresler, Doris Tresler, Jack Orr, Madge Orr, Margaret Ireland. Ruth Bevis, Georgina Harvey Wright, Hilary Harding, Ted Behrman, Nicholas Davis, Jim Glasspool, Nancy Dixon, Elizabeth Trotter, Caroline Koopmans, Claire de Jenkins. Philip Wheatley, Jose Spash, Lorraine McClintock, Tom Snag, Phyllis Miller, Alec Miller, Lara Weston, Jean Hartley, Ray Clear. Daphne Chusa, Andrew James, Audrey Day, Max Saunders Stoner, Barbara Far Ferguson, Brother Derek Price Jones, Michael Scott Joint, Aline Mansfield, Olive Newman, Rob Silverthorne, Stella Irons, Mel Colson, Dennis Fletcher, Nigel Plumpton, Ian Healy. Dennis Wolferston, Penelope Wolferston, Hilary Brudenell, Joan McCaffrey, Jean Townsend, Sydney Townsend, Sheila Keithley, Clifford Shuttleworth, Barbara Shuttleworth, Kathleen Nathan. Hear us, O merciful Father, as we remember in love those whom we have placed in your hands. Acknowledge, we pray, the sheep of your own fold, lambs of your own flock, sinners of your own redeeming. Enfold them in the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and in the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Amen. And have we some young people ready to come in and share with us, please? Might be an opportune moment for me to give notices while we wait. 
one one minute for them to come. Uh, in, in a moment, we're going to bless the shoeboxes that have been brought in so far for Operation Christmas Child. But just to say, it is not your last chance. So if you've still got your shoebox at home and you've, like me, left it to the last minute to fill it, then um, you can take it to John and Evelyn's house, if you know where that is, or we can tell you where that is, or we can arrange a collection. But I'm afraid you won't be able to bring it to this service next week, which brings me on to say, uh, you all have, uh, know what the Prime Minister said yesterday, and so, uh, Sadly, we will not be able to meet in person for the next four Sundays. And over the next 48 hours, we're going to just work out how we go back to online uh, church again. And so we'll email about that during the week. But you can expect the Sunday services next week to be online services. And we will continue to stay close to each other and pray for each other in this time. And if those who are in the room would like to stand, but the blessing goes to all who are worshipping with us today. May Christ, who makes saints of sinners, who has transformed those who we remember today, raise and strengthen you that you may transform the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.